In this lecture, we'll be looking at skewness and kurtosis of random variables. First, let's look at an illustration of a probability density function. And this is the standard normal density. And we need to get used to a little bit of the terminology when we look at distributions. And the first is what we call the center of the distribution. And so the center of a distribution happens within one standard deviation of the mean. And of course, because this is the standard normal density, we have mean zero, and then we have these integer values, one standard deviation to the right of the mean, two standard deviations to the right of the mean, so on and so forth. So we call all of the values within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean the center. Looking at values between one and two standard deviations above the mean, or one and two standard deviations below the mean, we call these the shoulders of the distribution. And so this piece here we call the right shoulder, and this piece here we call the left shoulder. Anything beyond these two standard deviations of the mean, we call the tails. And so here we have the right tail, and here we have the left tail. And the tails of distributions become very important when you start to talk about what you consider to be rare events. So with a normal distribution, once you start getting three, four standard deviations from the mean, you start to get into the territory of very rare events. But some distributions may have more weight, more probability mass out in these tails. And that's going to be one of the main topics of this lecture. But really, we need this terminology for center of the distribution, left shoulder, right shoulder, and then left tail and right tail. An example of a probability distribution that has what we call heavy tails. This is an example when the parameter typically called lambda is set to 1. And we can see this density function here has quite a bit of weight in the tails, especially when we compare it to the normal distribution. So this blue curve is the density for the standard normal that we were just looking at. And we can see how much more weight is in the distribution tails for the Cauchy distribution as compared to the normal. And this, of course, extends out here. And so you have three, four, five, six standard deviation moves being much more probable under the Cauchy distribution than the normal distribution. This will be particularly useful in certain applications like in risk management, where oftentimes an assumption of normality is made for something like asset returns. But in reality, there are rare events that happen in reality that are just too rare if you use the normal distribution. So oftentimes we, we try to use probability distributions that have heavier tails because they better model in reality that you have some of these moves that are beyond two or three standard deviations that happen with more probability than assigned to them by the normal distribution. We also have this idea of a skewed probability distribution. So here's an example. This is the, the density function for the log normal distribution. And we would call this a right skewed distribution because you can think of it like 
we've pulled on the right tail. And so we have probability mass going out into the right tail that you don't see in the left tail. So let's, let's give some definitions here. And we note first, when you study random variables, typ typically we look at the first two moments. We look at the expectation and then the variance. And we can really think of this as the first, dealing with the first two moments of the random variable. So we have an expectation of x for the mean, and essentially in here we have an expectation of x squared for the variance. We now move to the next two moments, namely if we're looking at x cubed or x to the fourth. So the first case is when we cube x, and we define the skewness of x in the following way. So if x has mean mu and variance sigma squared, the skewness is the expectation of x minus its average over sigma, all cubed. And so we can think of it as, look at, look at this expression in the round brackets here, and think of that as a z-score. So you're subtracting the mean and normalizing by the standard deviation. And then we're looking to see when you cube that, what do you get on average? And this measures the degree of asymmetry of x's probability distribution. And that's essentially because this is an odd power. So in this expectation, you can have these terms inside the expectation being positive or negative. Because of that, your skewness can be positive or negative. And this will pick up on that type of right skew, like our log normal distribution. And if we think about that skewness calculation, so we have the expectation of the cube of x minus its mean over its standard deviation. And what happens is x minus its mean so suppose our mean is somewhere around here. The terms where x minus the mean is large and positive happen over here with quite a bit of weight in terms of the probabilities. And so those largely positive deviations from the mean cubed contribute positively to this expectation more so than any large negative deviations from the mean. And that causes this expectation to be positive. In the end, an expectation really is just a weighted average. And so you have a lot more large deviations from the mean in the weighted average than you do largely negative deviations from the mean. And so that's why the skewness shows up positive when you have a right skew weight in that right tail that you don't have in the left tail. So we define the symmetry of our distribution about theta in the following way. So think of taking this value x and go theta plus x and theta minus x. And the definition of symmetry is such that if the probability that x is bigger than theta plus x matches the probability that x is less than theta minus x, probability of the random variable falling in each of these shaded regions is the same, regardless of the value of this little x. So you can slide this value anywhere, left or right, as long as x is positive, then the probability of these shaded regions is the same, then you have a symmetric distribution. And the idea of a symmetric distribution is that its density function is symmetric. So these would be examples of symmetric distributions about theta equals zero, because they are, one side is the reflection of the other. When you reflect about the line, say, x equals theta.
So if we have a symmetric distribution, the skewness will be zero. And if we have a non-symmetric distribution, the skewness will be either positive or negative. Let's think about how you compute the sample skewness of a data set. So suppose we have sample data, x1 to xn. Let x bar be the sample mean, and let little s be the sample standard deviation. Then we define the sample skewness, sk hat, in the following way. And it's kind of the natural definition. So we see that you just take x, xi, minus the sample average, normalized by the sample standard deviation, cube that, and average all of them. And we see how that makes sense. This is the definition of skewness, which is the average of the normalized deviation of x from its mean cubed. So here you have each one of the normalized deviations from the data set, cube them, average it. Now you notice we don't have any adjustment like we do in the sample standard deviation for um, issues of bias, but this is, this is a standard way to do it. Take an average by dividing by n. When we move on to the fourth moment, we look at something called kurtosis. And you see here, given random variable x with mean mu and variance sigma squared, the kurtosis of x is defined in this way. We use k, and it's the expectation of x minus its mean over sigma raised to the fourth power. This measures the concentration of probability mass in the tails of the distribution. And for asymmetric distributions, it also may pick, pick up some of the asymmetry. For sample kurtosis, we do the same type of thing that we did with sample skewness. And so we take those deviations from the sample mean, normalized by the sample standard deviation, raise them to the fourth power, and average. And we see how that really is the natural sample version of this definition of kurtosis here. And again, this picks up weight in the tails because x minus its mean, when that is large, and when the probability distribution gives these large deviations weight in terms of probability for this weighted average, that results in a higher kurtosis. So when you have more weight in the tails, you have heavier weight on this fourth power of the deviation of x from its mean, and it inflates this kurtosis. So that's why kurtosis gives you this tail weight measurement. And notice that it picks up weight in the right tail in the same way as weight in the left tail because it doesn't care whether this deviation from the mean is positive or negative because it's being raised to an even power. We also want to point out some properties of the normal distribution. So here's the density function for the normal distribution depicted as the density for the standard normal. And we should note that the skewness of the normal distribution is zero. So the normal distribution is symmetric about its mean and its kurtosis is three. And this becomes really important because it introduces this standard jargon of excess kurtosis. Because the kurtosis of the normal distribution is three, we define the excess kurtosis of a random variable x as k minus three. And this is important to be aware of because it is very standard and sometimes just called kurtosis. So the idea of measuring kurtosis in excess of that of the normal distribution is really common. And if you use software, you always need to look to see if the kurtosis functionality is giving you the kurtosis as we defined it, which is just that fourth moment, or this idea of excess kurtosis, which is that kurtosis as we defined it, minus three. So it's always important to note when you're using software, whether it be Excel or MATLAB or Python or C++, you need to make sure you know whether you're getting a kurtosis measurement 
or an excess kurtosis measurement. So in summary, these two new concepts of kurtosis and skewness help us look at what's happening in a probability distribution, both in terms of the weight in the tails and the skewness. If the probability distribution tends to have more weight for large positive deviations versus weight for large negative deviations. And this will be very important in many different applications, particularly in risk management.